Hi, this is Miles Maria, the Soldier of Mary. So I'm continuing this series looking at various insights into the life of our Lord and His Holy Mother. And this one's actually on St. Alphonsus. And you might be thinking to yourself, did St. Alphonsus have some visions or apparitions? Well, I think he did actually, but... Um, and so he did learn some things directly from conversations of our Lord. But more in, in St. Alphonsus' writing, what he does is St. Alphonsus applies his amazingly you know saint alphonsus was an artist he uh, we have some of his paintings still around today and he had this uh, and obviously we have some of his hymns and some of his uh, christmas carols still around to this day saint alphonsus was an artist and he was a romantic and he was exceptionally gifted in painting a scene and he was some profoundly in love with jesus and mary in a century Saint Alphonsus is the giant of the of the um, the 18th century, the entire 18th century. He lives to a good old age, Saint Alphonsus, and he's the giant of the 18th century. In a century of Jansenism, a century when the love of God has grown cold in men's hearts, he uh, really ignites it, um, love of God uh, in among Catholics through his beautiful uh, writing, written in Italian to. The benefits of, of his Italian audience, people of all classes, anyone that was able to read uh, the vernacular in Italian was able to benefit from his writings and translated quite quickly uh, into English in the um, beginning of the 19th century. So St. Alphonsus um, gives us insights. The ways he gives us insights, um, number one, he's aware of revelations from other saints that he often refers to but secondarily and principally his insights are are like noticing applying his imagination to a scene and picking out something in the scene that that god allows him to god inspires him to pick out and to describe for us so that we in turn can enter into the scene and be filled with more love for god and more sorrow for our sins and hope for heaven and fear of hell and uh, petition all the acts that that for alphonsus are the things that um, define mental prayer so i want to share some of his insights and and you'll pick up very quickly as i read out some of his insights what I mean by his artistry and the romantic nature of of his writings, it's, uh, you know, it's captivating. Some of Alphonsus is so rich. It's like um, as you're reading it, you, you feel like you just got to stop, you know, and just put your head in your hands and cry or something. He's he really knows how to pull the heartstrings and he does it because we're body and soul. We are, um, we've got hearts and we respond to God through our entire our entire person so let me give you first of all an insight into how he imagines um the scene in heaven just prior to the incarnation and i should add that this is actually something that's in the fathers of the church i should have a video on insights from the fathers of the church soon i don't know if i mentioned this fact there but also it's in venerable mary of agrida so alphonsus is kind of like i said drawing from a number of sources uh, and bringing them beautifully composed into his own writing. So here is heaven prior to the Annunciation. Behold, the Archangel Gabriel is sent as an ambassador to the town of Nazareth to announce to the Virgin Mary the coming of the Word who desires to become incarnate in her womb. Almighty God, having determined to make himself man in order to redeem fallen humanity and to manifest to the world his infinite goodness, as he was about to choose on earth his mother, sought among women the holiest and the most humble. Among them all he saw one, the youthful Virgin Mary, who, as she was the most perfect in all virtues, so she was the most simple and humble as a dove in her own esteem. Let this one then, said God, be my chosen mother. God exalted her in her humility, as he himself would later explain, whoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled, but the man that humbles himself shall be exalted. And he puts the same uh, scene in, in another way. He says, the Lord, drawn by the odour of this humble virgin, 
chose her for his mother, when he wished to become man to redeem the world. While the king was at his repose, my spike nard sent forth its odour, thus relates the holy canticle. For the blessed virgin, like the small herb, excelled the odour of humility, the fragrance of which ascended even to heaven, and in heaven it, as it were, awakened him, who was in his repose, and brought him to rest in her womb. It's clever. It's really clever and really beautiful. So, let's give you some other insights from St. Alphonsus. Uh, St. Alphonsus always looks at us whenever, in all of his meditations, he always, as you know with the Stations of the Cross, he always, he looks at the scene of what's happening, then he looks at us and, and wants to apply it to us. So, let me read this one uh, from you. Man does not love me, God would seem to say. This is kind of to do with the nativity. Because he does not... Man does not love me, God would seem to say, because he does not see me. I wish to make myself seen by him and to converse with him and so make myself loved. The divine love for man was extreme and so it had been from all eternity. All the creatures God had made were so many darts of love to the heart of man. But God was not satisfied with these darts only. They were not enough to gain him the love of men. He has made me as a chosen arrow. In his quiver he has hidden me. Just as a sportsman keeps in reserve the best arrow for the last shot in order to secure his prey, so did God among all his gifts keep Jesus in reserve till the fullness of time should come. And then he sent him as a last dart to wound with love the hearts of men. Jesus then was the choice and reserved arrow, powerful enough to bring nations to their knees. Oh, may I be among that number of stricken hearts, burning with love before the manger of Bethlehem and before the holy presence of the blessed sacrament on our altars. See as he, he turns to us there at the end in a prayer. There's so many times that um, St. Alphonsus also imagines dialogues between various uh, people in the life of, uh, of our Lord. So, for instance, um, let, me get, let me zoom in on, on, again, the nativity, and we listen to St. Joseph. When Joseph heard this order about the census at Bethlehem, he was much agitated as to whether he should take or whether he should leave or take with him the virgin mother as she was now near childbirth. My spouse and my lady, St. Joseph said to her, on the one hand, I should not wish to leave you alone. On the other, if I take you, I am afflicted at the thought that you will have to suffer much during this long journey and in such severe weather. My poverty will not permit me to conduct you with that comfort which you require. But Mary answers him, and encourages him with these words, My Joseph, do not fear, I shall go with you, the Lord will assist us. She knew by divine inspiration, and also because she was well versed in the prophecy of Micah, that the divine infant was to be born in Bethlehem. She therefore takes the swathing bands and the other poor garments already prepared, and departs with Joseph. So you can see that kind of imaginative conversation between Saint Joseph and Our Lady, which is um, which is an insight because as we pray the Rosary, the whole point is we enter into the scene, and who's better who better to enter into the scene with than someone so amazingly in love with our Lord as Saint Alphonsus was, uh, and as his writings kind of draw our heart and help us to um, respond to us, Lord, in a way that is in some way his, his due. So let's, um, let me try and um, close this recording now so we don't, uh, uh, we don't continue too long. Um, let, me, let me offer you an insight, um, yeah, an insight around the passion, because as we know, St. Alphonsus is famous for his uh, Way of the Cross, but the Way of the Cross does not exhaust his writing on the passion. Um, he has a whole book on the passion. So when I was compiling 
insights for the rosary for St. Alphonsus. I went through all of his books. Uh, that wasn't too difficult because I have read St. Alphonsus since I was a teenager. And I've got lots of annotated books. Uh, a lot of his books are annotated and highlighted and everything. So let me read something from The Passion. Raise up your eyes, my soul, and behold that crucified man. Behold the divine lamb, now sacrificed upon the altar of pain. Consider that he is the beloved son of the eternal father. Consider that he is dead for the love that he has borne you. See how he holds his arm stretched out to embrace you, his head bent down to give the kiss of peace, his side open to receive you into his heart. Does not a God so loving deserve to be loved? Listen to the words he addresses to you from that cross. My son, look and see wherever there be anyone in the world who has loved you more than I have. O oh, my dear Redeemer, well do, I re well do I recognize in these your wounds and in your lacerated body, as it were, through so many lattices, the tender affection which you retain for me. Since then, in order to pardon me, you have not pardoned yourself. Oh, look upon me now with that same love wherewith you did one day look upon me from the cross whilst you were dying for me. Look upon me and enlighten me and draw my whole heart to yourself, that so, from this day forth, I may love none else but you. Let me not be ever unmindful of your death. You promised that, when raised up on the cross, you would draw all hearts to yourself. Behold, this heart of mine, which made tender by your death and enamoured of you, desires to offer no further resistance to your cause. Oh, draw it to yourself and make it all your own so that's uh that's an amazing uh, powerful um contemplation of our lord on the cross um as i'm looking at some of my other notes that i was gonna read this episode i'll just gloss over some of the insights now so again we have um after our lord's death our lady desiring to be in heaven desire to after after our lord's sorry after our lord's ascension into heaven our lady is desirous to join him desirous to be with him and yet she stays on earth for the comfort of the of the apostles um, but her heart is always in heaven you know she desires heaven then we have um we have at our lady's assumption an amazing description of this procession and how our lady as she reaches heaven she meets individually different ranks of of saints so she meets like the virgins and she meets the martyrs and then she meets saint james who at that time is the only apostle in heaven and then she meets saint joachim and Anne. she meets the holy patriarchs and then finally she meets saint john the baptist and saint joseph and um we get this beautiful scene of of our lady processing into heaven which again is very useful to help with the fifth glorious mystery uh, the way he paints that scene because for some people the fifth glorious is quite a, a difficult mystery to enter in on so that's enough on saint alphonsus and some of his insights um all of his writings the translation by uh, Eugene Grimm I think it is are all in the public domain and you can get them off archive um, and hopefully I'll put a link below but also I I have allocated uh, in a little book bead by bead meditations for the rosary taken from the writings of Saint Alphonsus that's another way of, of drawing from his insights and benefiting from them may Almighty God bless you may Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen